Hi, I'm Jeff Mucklin with the National Canal Museum and today I'd like to talk to you about water power, agriculture, and the way that people made food in the 1800s. Now, food doesn't come from a grocery store. That's where we get food, but food is produced, it's grown on farms. And in the 1800s, the kinds of crops that they were growing in this area were not that dissimilar from what they grow in this area today. Corn, wheat, and barley. Not many of you know farmers, I imagine, but if you lived in the 1800s, most of your friends and neighbors would have been people who were growing and producing food. There aren't as many people in that profession today because we have machinery that makes this work a lot easier and allows fewer people to be involved in the process of growing food. But rest assured that in the 1800s, many people that you knew would have been in some way involved in the process of making, producing, and preparing food. If you want to make, say, a loaf of bread, the process begins on a farm, where a farmer needs to grow some sort of grain. Again, that could be corn or wheat or barley. After the crop is grown, it needs to be harvested. Now today, crops are harvested with large machines, like combines, that can move through a field and very quickly harvest the crop. They didn't have combines in the 1850s. They had to do this kind of work with human muscle power. We did have some machines that made the job a little easier. For example, we had tools like scythes, which allow a person to very quickly harvest large amounts of grain. After your grain has been harvested, you need to transport it to a facility where you can grind the grain into flour for making bread. Today, we transport grains on trains and in trucks, sometimes using airplanes. None of these things were available in the early 1800s. The canal was an important part of this process because using a canal you could transport bulky cargoes of grain cheaply and efficiently. You could also transport these things over land with wagons, but that was more expensive and it was slower. The canal was a very effective way of transporting these things. And that's probably the reason why this mill was located right next to the canal, because you could cheaply and easily deliver the raw material that the mill needed to make flour. Now, the mill that once stood at this location actually predates the canal. Before the canal went through, this mill would have been grinding grain for local farmers, and the flour that was produced would have been sent back to the people that lived in this local area. It was being um, made in this area and it was being consumed in this local area. But after the canal was built, people were able to bring in grain and then sell it to markets much further away. So for example, some of the grain that may have been ground into flour here may have been used in Philadelphia or New York. You could ship it much further using the canal. So what exactly does a mill do? How does it turn raw oats or wheat or corn kernels into flour? Well, that's done with another tool. It's done with a grinding wheel like this one. Now, in ancient times, people didn't have large grinding wheels. Uh, at one point in history, people actually had to grind grain using rocks with human muscle power. But by the 1800s, people had developed mechanization. They had developed tools that could use other sources of power other than human muscle to do this work for them, which I'm sure they appreciate. A large grinding wheel like this really can't be turned with human muscle power. It used another form of energy. It used water power. Water power is an ancient form of energy. There are other ways of getting energy other than human muscle power. You can use wind energy. Uh, but wind energy wouldn't have been a very convenient way to turn our grinding wheel down here. We're in a valley, uh, we're surrounded by trees, there just isn't that much wind available. But there's a lot of water power. Just behind me you can see the rushing water of the Lehigh River. The water has a lot of potential energy because it is moving from a higher area to a lower area. And as water moves from a high area to a lower area, its potential energy becomes kinetic energy the energy of moving things. And we can use that kinetic energy to drive a water wheel. And we can use that moving water wheel to drive machinery. It's really very simple. I have here uh, a bottle of water. And if I just pour the bottle of water onto my water wheel, 
you can see that the falling water is converting its potential energy into kinetic energy and driving the water wheel. And you can just imagine this connected to some larger machine doing useful work. So we've talked about the way they grew grain and we've talked about the way we had we extracted energy from moving water to grind our grain. Let's put it all together with this diagram. So here we're seeing a source of water power which is falling over our water wheel. And we already saw that moving water can be used to extract energy. And we're using that energy to spin this gear shaft which is connected to our grinding stone. Uh, the grinding stone is a large stone. It's very heavy and if we can get grain in between our two stones, as the grinding wheel rotates, the grains are crushed between our heavy stone and our immovable bed stone. And that grinds the grain into usable flour that we collect in a chute. So a lot has certainly changed since the 1800s, but we still do this today. We still need to, we still like to eat bread and we still need to grow it on farms, we still need to grind the bread into flour. You may have seen products like this at your local grocery store. Now you know how it's made. It starts as, in this case, uh, wheat grains that were ground at a mill, and we can use that flour that we've produced to make a loaf of bread. This is way, the way food is produced even today. Thank you for joining me, and I hope that the next time you're enjoying a loaf of bread, you think about this story.